Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the environmental effects of addition polymers. You should then be able to describe the actions we can take to reduce these effects. In the last video we looked at addition polymers such as polyethene which I'm showing you here. Remember that addition polymers are made from alkenes which are produced from crude oil. We saw that addition polymers are very unreactive molecules. This is because the carbon to hydrogen and carbon to carbon bonds are both nonpolar and relatively strong, and this makes these bonds difficult to break. Now, this lack of reactivity is one of the reasons why addition polymers are such useful molecules. We can use addition polymers to make containers for food and drinks without the polymer reacting with the contents. However, their lack of reactivity also presents environmental problems. Addition polymers are non biodegradable. This means that they are not broken down by microorganisms in the environment. And because of this, addition polymers can pollute the environment for decades or longer. This can be extremely harmful to wildlife. For example, seabirds can get entangled in polymer waste or mistake it for food, and this can be fatal. Even when addition polymers are used responsibly, they still involve the use of crude oil, which is a non renewable resource. The crude oil needs to be transported and refined, which requires energy. And because addition polymers are used in such large amounts, they can occupy a lot of space in landfills. So, as you can see, the manufacture and disposal of addition polymers can have major effects on the environment. But there are ways that we can reduce these effects. Firstly, rather than sending waste polymers to landfill, they can be combusted, generating energy. However, combusting polymers can release harmful chemicals. A good example is the polymer polychloroethene or PVC. As we saw in the last video, PVC contains chlorine atoms. When PVC is combusted, the gas hydrogen chloride is produced. Hydrogen chloride is corrosive and must be removed from any waste gases before they're released. Secondly, polymer waste can be sorted into the different polymers and recycled into new products. By recycling polymers, we reduce the use of crude oil and the amount of waste in landfills. Another type of recycling is called feedstock recycling. Remember that feedstock are the raw materials used by the chemical industry. In feedstock recycling, waste polymers are converted back to simpler hydrocarbons. These hydrocarbons can then be cracked and converted to different polymers. The advantage of feedstock recycling is that the waste polymers do not need sorting. Feedstock recycling also allows us to convert one polymer into a different polymer. Now, scientists are working on producing new polymers that are biodegradable. These are usually based on biological material, for example, from plants. The benefit of these polymers is that they naturally break down due to the action of microorganisms, and they're manufactured from plant material, which is a renewable resource. I should point out, though, that biodegradable polymers are not addition polymers. Scientists are also working on oil based polymers which slowly break down in sunlight. These are called photodegradable polymers. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the environmental effects of addition polymers and the actions we can take to reduce these effects. 